morning everyone. So week four of September. Um, it's mainly harvesting and tidying this week really. I've um, got no sowing or planting out to do so far this week. Um, what I'm going to be doing is taking the stalks off the old grow bite shakes. I'm going to saw those down and put those in the compost. Clear this area a little bit here. What's amazing is that some of the rhubarb has started coming up again really. Oh, because we've had the rain. We've had rain. It's um, started to regenerate some of it. It's weird. And the, and the artichokes have started to come through as well now. So yeah, so we take off all the old stems. We'll um, harvest the tomatoes and some of the really hot red peppers. We want to dry those and see if we can turn them into a chilli powder. Um, pick some tomatoes. I've noticed some of the tomato plants are starting to sort of um, die off. I might pull those up and take the green ones off of those ones as well today. Um, yeah, we'll take a moment, put them on top of a cupboard, cupboard in a, in a box or something with a tea towel over it and they'll go red gradually. So we'll do that as well today. So there's odds and, jo odds and sod jobs to do this week really. So we'll start um, by t cropping the tomatoes I think. So this row of tomatoes here, they're starting to die off on the ends now. Um, so I think we'll strip them out completely. I don't think it's blight, I think they're just starting to die off. So we'll take that row out. The other row looks okay. So we'll leave those for longer. So you can leave tomatoes as long as until the first frost really. You know when you're gonna get when you're gonna get your first frost, that'll be the couple of days before that'll be the time to take out the rest of the tomatoes. Because they'll carry on ripening until then really. So but this they look a bit sick, so I might take those ones out now. So we've taken out some of the tomato plants because I think we were getting early signs of blight so we've taken them out and picked the red ones as well. And I've got some aubergines, <laughs> not very big, <laughs> very small but we'll use them and I actually found another cucumber so I thought I'd had the last few cucumbers, found another one, nice little red cabbage. And what I'm doing I'm taking the um, hot red peppers off and we're going to take them home and dry them, dehydrate them and see if we can make a nice hot chilli powder with them. I don't think I could eat them because they're very very hot apparently these ones so, and we're not really into hot hot chillies <laughs> so um, I think the best we can do with them is probably dry them and uh, make them into a powder. So I'll take out the rest of the um, any red tomatoes in here as well today and then um, got some other stuff to crop as well. Still got some beans that are coming through, some uh, fresh beans. Parsley still going well, coriander. We've got some lettuce, we've got some uh, chard. We've still got, um, what else we've got? Apple, there's still some, a lot of apples on the tree here, we just noticed, and they're getting quite a large size. So I think we might pick those off as well today, take those home, because they're nice large size. They're probably really, really sweet now. So good stage to crop them. So yeah, so a few more jobs to do. So we're going to pick a bag of cow um, to dehydrate again to make some green powder. What we do is we dehydrate it and the stems don't dehydrate very well. So what we do is we cut out the stems but rather than waste those as well we, we chop them up and we put those in the freezer and use them for like stews, casseroles etc. So yeah, we only dehydrate the leaf really. So we'll fill up a bag and we'll, we'll do that sometime this week, dehydrate them. We're sawing the stems off the um, last year's growth. You can see the new ones are coming through quite lovely. Need a bit of weeding around here. But yeah, they're growing well. And I covered, I put bark all the way around them last year. They're still there so it's um, kept them quiet moist when it was dry. It worked quite well. So yeah, just about taking them all off. Then tidying up this area a bit. Removing all the bean poles. Uh, 
and put the canes away for the winter. Stop them rotting away. So we're trying to find the young, fresh ones amongst the uh, rows. So we'll replant those and we'll dispose of the older ones into a compost bin and um, relocate them, give them a good watering and hopefully they'll, they'll take off quite straight away and we'll um, have new strawberries next year. So the root systems on the, on the new ones are quite good. They've put them about nine inches apart in the new row. Give them a good firming in. They've still got their runners on from the um, parent plant. So they've rooted themselves these ones really. Um, but yeah, they're looking quite good. Looking quite healthy. Got some nice new fresh leaf on them as well. Um, we usually make it a couple of times a year and it varies on what we use um, depending on what time of the year it is. If we make it in uh, the winter, uh, it will have parsnips in, it will have leeks in and whatever else we've got in store at the time. Uh, this time of year we've got courgettes available, we've got tomatoes available, we've got some beans available, parsley, spinach, so it just depends on what we've got to um, put into it basically. But we make it into a powder form. So it's no different to sort of the vegetable stock cubes you buy in the shops. It's, uh, they make it into a sort of cube cube uh, basically to use as a sort of stock for soups, stews, loads of other recipes. Uh, but the difference is you can control what goes into it. If you look at the ones in the shops, they've got additives, flavorings, MSG, all sorts of stuff in them. Um, but when you make it your own, you're using your own um, harvest, so you know exactly what's in your bouillon powder. So we've chopped, to, chopped everything up and loaded it. We end up with four and a half trays of courgettes, one and a half uh, trays of potatoes, half of an onion, half a tray of onions, a little sprig of parsley, half a tray of beans and half a tray of spinach, one tray of tomato and half a tray of carrot. Um, the tomato we have to put on the sheet because it's very juicy. Onion's quite well sliced, and the on uh, potato we saw those. What else we got? We got some carrot here. So carrot we just sort of uh, chopped them roughly and put them in there basically. Not much to us yet. Oh, this is the beans. So beans and spinach are in on one sort of tray as well. So they go into the oven now. They go into the oven. They go into the dehydrator for around 10 hours at 140 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Some of them will be done before that. Some do before. The um, parsley will be done quite quick. Yeah, so if they're done, we'll take them out and put them into a bowl. Uh, find one over the place. Onions, nice and crispy and dry. The beans, yep. Tomatoes, yep. And more courgettes and the <laughs> carrots have shrunk completely. It's amazing. That was a carrot. Wow. Yeah, so what we do now is we'll blend them into a powder. Um, this is what we took out last night because these dry first. This is the parsley and the spinach. So I'll give those a blend first, I think. So it's all lovely and mixed together now. So put that into the jar. What we're going to be doing today is dehydrating some apples. Um, we've got two apple trees in the garden and we've got three um, on our two plots as well. So once we've, once we've dehydrated and processed them, we end up with a nice crispy apple. Mm, lovely. Um, our grandchildren absolutely love them. I think we made 10 jars last year. We generally make about 10 jars a year and we've got one unopened and one half empty jar already. So that's all we've got left. So what we're gonna do today is 
dehydrate tomatoes into powder. Um, I mean, tomatoes, nutritionally, very, very good for you. High in sort of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Uh, there is particularly one called lycopene, which I believe is very, very, very powerful antioxidant. Um, I mean, there is there are various ways of storing your tomatoes. You could bottle them, you could cook them down and freeze them. So there are various ways, but we find by dehydrating, we reduce it into a concentrated powder, um, and you know, loads and loads of tomatoes go into filling one jar of tomatoes, basically. <laughs> Let's liquidise those really well so I can just keep chucking tomatoes in now. So just put them in whole now, which makes it easy. No slicing, no chopping, just put them in whole, liquidise it and pour it onto the uh, dehydration tray. one quarter of a cup for each circle we found the sort of best way of doing it So just use the back of a spoon to sort of spread it out so it's not too thick in the middle then. It helps it dry as well. So that's one tray done. So that can go into dehydrate now. Eight more trays to go. And we use the we use the parchment because it's so wet otherwise it would just fall through the bottom basically. So that's the last tray done. So it's uh, nine trays. So let it go into the dehydrator. And we actually used um, 2.5 kilograms of tomatoes. So they're in. And we've got a little bit of juice left, which we can add to the meal later. So yeah, so put that on for 10 hours. So that's been dried now. And you know when it's dry enough, because it just breaks up into small pieces. If we just break that all up, and then we'll um, blend it into a powder and see how much powder we've got. So that's all crushed up now. I mean, you could leave it like this, really. Um, it makes a lovely tomato crisp as well. <laughs> yeah, you could leave it like this, but we like to powder it, because it uh, can be rehydrated, as we said earlier, um, just with some water into like a puree mixture, or you can use it in all sorts of um, meals. You can use it as pizza base, add it to bolognese, all sorts of things you can do with it once it's powdered. So we'll blend it into a powder. So a full blender, blender's work. As it powdered, it's really important. Now. Yeah, it's so that ends up probably about a quarter. Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed uh, this week's vlog. Um, yeah, I mean, start, things are starting to reduce now. We're getting on top of it. It's now a matter of tidying up for the autumn, really getting some crops in for the win autumn and winter, but it's generally just tidying up, um, clearing all the weeds, um, harvesting the pumpkins and the butternut squashes the next uh, couple of weeks as well. So they'll be out the ground. We've taken out all the bean poles. So yeah, I mean, it's just tidying up now. Um, but yeah, come. So hope you've enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up if you have. Leave us a comment or a suggestion in the box below. And if you'd like to subscribe, please um, follow the link and subscribe to our channel.